Hello everybody, my name is Felix and I'm the Program Director of the Master's Program Game Studies and Engineering of the University of Klagenfurt. Today I would like to give a short teaser lecture for you guys to show you more about the world of gaming and how we talk about it in an academic fashion. And for that I would like to open the field with one question to you. What is a video game? Think about it for a moment, pause the video if you want to, take your time and think about what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the term video game. What is, in your opinion, a defining feature of the medium or what's the kind of quality that something definitely needs to have to be considered a video game? Now, as you might have noticed, there's actually many things going on in a video game and potentially you have brainstormed a list of at least 10, 15, maybe 20 terms or key ideas that you think should be a part of a video game. So maybe let's start at the most obvious. As you can see from our little background clip here, a video game definitely is a visual medium. We see our robot having an adventure in that little dungeon. We see graphics. There are a lot of things that influence us just in the same way a film would do potentially. We can see who our protagonist is. We have a certain kind of atmosphere and vibe that we get from the surrounding um, level design, from the enemies, from the things that the avatar has to do or can do. And added to that, that's something that you won't have in the video right now, because otherwise you couldn't hear me talking over it, is the sound quality of the video game. There's ambient noises, there's background music, there's sound effects that also all convey some kind of specific atmosphere to make the entire setting feel like a science fiction film, potentially. And as you might have guessed, there's also the narrative aspect, the story, so to speak, of that we have in a video game. Because there is something that this robot has to achieve, and we as the players follow him on that way, learn more about what he as a character or what she as a character is like, learn more about um, other NPCs in the game, and potentially have a great story unfolding right in front of us. So that's the kind of technical qualities that we can see are all there in the medium. And then maybe there are some things that are a bit more subjective to talk about. For example, there are rules in a game. And now, on the one hand, rules are also something quite technical because a video game is designed in a specific fashion. And if the program doesn't allow us to do a specific thing, then we just cannot do that. So we could basically say that the code of a video game equals its rules to a certain degree. At the same time, however, we all know that there are rules that go beyond what the game offers us to do. All of us who have played online games against other people know that there's something like sportsmanship. There's so to speak informal rules that we kind of stick to in order to play fair with one another. So rules can definitely be more than a formal quality of a video game. And even more of you have potentially thought of fun as the first thing. A video game is something that entertains me, something that I have fun playing, something that I do in my free time, something that's maybe the opposite of work, something that I do when I don't have to learn for school or for university or go to my job. But then again, fun again is a very subjective quality. So for some of us, a jump and run Metroidvania kind of game with a robot where you walk around shooting is a fun pastime activity. Others might prefer strategy games. Others might prefer building games. Fun is something that might also change according to our mood. On a good day, this game might be fun to me. When I'm feeling down, I might enjoy another game even more than that. So all of these qualities can be discussed to various degree, and we can see that all of them add to our understanding of what a video game actually is, but none of them truly encompasses everything that a video is or a video game is in a single term. So what is the video game? A great number of scholars has tried to come up with the perfect definition of what a video game, or more generally speaking, what a game actually is. And right now, I would like to introduce to you a couple of the most influential ones, in my opinion, to give you a kind of an understanding of 
what are the general concepts that we are working with in our master's program and where do these concepts actually come from. If we go back to the 1930s, 1940s, we come to a great definition by anthropologist and cultural historian Johann Hausenha, who called games a so-called magic circle. Now, at first it sounds kind of abstract, but if we think about it, there's actually a real clever idea in there, because he said that a game is something that we willingly enter. It's us wanting to go into a potentially fictional world where we accept rules that are not the rules of our reality, so the game rules, so to speak, and that we enter after we're done playing it. And now, while this um, idea has been challenged over the decades again and again and again, the very basic idea of the game being something secluded from our real life and something that we want to enter is an idea that has stuck with us ever since and that we're coming back to again and again in our discussions of the medium. Another more formal definition, perhaps, comes from game designers Katie Zalen and Eric Zimmerman, who, in order to summarize a book of over 600 pages as condensedly as possible, say that a game is a system of artificial rules of conflict between players that also generate quantifiable outcome. Now, that's kind of a whopper of a definition, but think about that one again for a couple of seconds. Again, if you want to pause the video for a moment and think about the last video game you played because chances are quite high that whatever the game was, it follows this formal definition of Salem and Zimmerman to a specific degree. Many, many video games that we have nowadays try to facilitate some kind of conflict. There's a boss that has to be fought. There's a, a enemy or a rival group of players that has to be defeated, either in sportsmanship ways or depending on the genre by any other kind of means and there's always a quantifiable outcome and quantifiable here can for example mean that you have a high score in the end that shows that you're better than somebody else or it can mean that there's a clearly defined winner in the end of a match and a clearly defined loser now on the one hand this is a very influential definition but at the same time it shows us that hey um games can actually be more than that because when we think about genres like the walking simulator, for instance, or when we think about experimental video games, there are definitely things that we can do in a video game that go beyond the winner and the loser. There are people playing building strategy games, for example, not to win against the computer, but just to realize their perfect vision of a medieval fantasy town or a science fiction skyscraper. Finally, we have rather pragmatic definitions by industry giants like Sid Meier, for example, who says that a video game can be defined as a series of interesting choices. Now, of course, that's nothing that we can rely on on a formal perspective, but that's something that's brilliant for a young and inspiring or aspiring game designer, somebody who really wants to make a video game to be something special and who might consider building a game upon a series of interesting choices. So needless to say, there are hundreds, perhaps even thousands of different definitions of what a video game is, all of them with certain aspects that they get very right, but also with certain imperfections. And we won't be able to solve this riddle within the next seven to eight minutes, but we can talk about things that a video game or a game generally offers in contrast to other forms of media. Things that are typical for gaming entertainment and for being part of a gaming world that go beyond what a film can do or what a book can do, for example. One of them is that a video game offers agency. And with that term, we usually describe the fact that we are able to do something in a video game world. Our actions matter in these places. And this can have quite interesting effects. Consider a game, for example, that poses relevant moral choices to you, that gives you something to think about, and that makes you wonder if you made a good or a evil choice, to speak in, in rather simplistic terms for a second. Moreover, games definitely offer immersion. They do a lot of things that make us want to enter and sink into a virtual world and become of another dimension to become part of a fantasy realm to become part of a spaceship adventure crew or to become a race driver and whatever video games do they do a lot in order to help us to achieve that degree that can be everything from super realistic graphics to having our controller rumble for a moment when we crash for example into an opponent's race car 
up to the point of us being able to design our own character or enter a name for our avatar, everything that helps us to feel being a part of a specific world. Video games can be pretty engaging. And here we have to be careful because with engagement, we are exclusively talking about cognitive engagement. They give us something to think about. They give us something to consider. We reflect upon a game's rules. When we drive our race car, for example, we think about how we can improve our controller input. We think about how other computer drivers react to us. We try to understand if there are specific patterns, for instance, or we try to find out if there's a specific setup for our race car that's just so much better for our personal driving style than other setups. There's a lot of different things that video games give us in terms of engagement. And if we think about it on a more meta level, we could also argue that video games offer a very specific engagement with the digital world in general, because they give us basic guidelines and rules on how we can interact with electronic devices. On the other hand, we could say that video games also provide a very specific kind of involvement by which I want to refer to emotional involvement. Video games cause feelings. They make us happy if we achieve victory. They make us sad if we ponder about the fate of specific characters in fantasy role-playing games, for instance. And they always try to elicit some kind of emotional reaction for us. And this is also something incredibly interesting and useful. Video games make us feel more because they involve us more. Think back about terms like agency and immersion that we have discussed already. If we are part of a fantasy world, of a virtual world, and our actions matter, the way uh, we reflect emotionally upon these actions is much more impactful. The big question still remains, however, why is all of this important? Why does it matter to talk about video games? And I think with the key terminology that I've presented you on the last slide, we are one step closer to solving that riddle at least. It is important to talk about video games because our entire world is becoming more digital and playful all at once. We could actually say, and some researchers even say, that we are in the age of ludicness already. We are in an age of playfulness. That's because all our devices are becoming smart devices. Think about all the things that you can control in your home with a remote control or maybe even from a smartphone or tablet computer already. There are many ways that technology wants us to be engaged with, and all these way ways reflect some kind of playfulness. They all engage us with techniques and tricks that they potentially um, copied from video game mechanics. Being in an age of playfulness in a ludic age, however, also means that we have to identify and discuss gaming phenomena and research more clearly, and the key terms that I have presented to you allow us to do so. The fact that we have agency in a video game, that we can immerse in a fantastic world by wanting to be there and by seeing that our actions matter, is an incredibly important aspect. For people nowadays all over the globe, it's not just important to follow a main character or to understand their motivations by, by watching a film or by reading a book and to develop some kind of empathy with them, but it's about what we want to do. We want to be the heroes of our own stories, and this is something that speaks for our generation in its entirety and something that we have to discuss, and therefore we need specific terminology in order to discuss it properly. Most importantly, however, to understand how video games affect us and how video games can create awareness within us allows us to be better game designers ourselves. As we could see also from the sample definitions of what a game or what a video game actually is, there are certain traditions that we have relied upon for generation after generation. The fact that video games have to be about conflict, for instance, or that video games always have to foster a quantifiable outcome. But we can do more than just provide standard video game definitions or just provide more than standard video gameplay with each and every coming iteration. Every new game has potential to be something creative, to be something masterful, and to engage us in ways in which video games have just never engaged us before. So think about this last question I want to give to you. How do video games impact your life? And with that, I hopefully gave you something to think about the next time you play your favorite video game. Thank you very much for joining us today. 
Have a nice day, everybody. Bye.